What's to become of our world? <sighs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 facts you might not know about the Dune franchise. Hey! Oh, don't you trust your own eyes. This is a movie that never got made, but it has its fingerprints all over so many other movies that came afterwards. For this list, we're going over the lesser known facts about Dune. The movies, the books, and everything in between. We are discussing key plot details, so there will be some major spoilers ahead. Go read the first book and come back to us. If there's any Dune fact whose absence you think is a mind killer, let your fears pass over you and tell us about it in the comments. Number 10. Trailer Parallels You have proven you can rule yourself. While the David Lynch interpretation of Dune has split opinions on how well it adapted the source material, it still managed to increase the franchise's profile. The Denis Villeneuve version is still forthcoming, but fans are optimistic. Part of the reason why is that some have been able to line up shots from the Lynch film and or its trailer with shots from the new trailer. Remove your hand from the box. And you die. Once in a box. Seeing both side by side is wild, not only because of how far visual effects have come, but also because of how many shots can be paralleled. While this has some people wary of a repeat of Lynch's movie, we choose to be hopeful it can exceed our expectations. I know you. Number 9. The Original Protagonist these days, everyone familiar with Dune knows that it's about Paul Atreides and his quest for revenge against those who betrayed his family. The Baron and the Emperor himself will be forced to deal with us. But in early drafts of the book, Frank Herbert had a different hero in mind, Liette Kynes. So you are Dr. Kynes, the judge of the change. And the Imperial Ecologist, sir. An Imperial Planetologist, Liet Kynes is a key part of the story, particularly with regard to the ecological goals of the Fremen. As Herbert wrote more drafts of the story, though, Paul became the protagonist, with Kynes' goals intersecting with Paul's. You're the one, aren't you? The one who's never seen, the one who may not even exist at all. And of course, Liet's daughter Chani became very important to Paul, too. Number 8. Sandworms are the equivalents of dragons Despite being set in the future, Dune has a timeless quality to it. It's been called sci-fantasy, and that's a good descriptor. Some of its most fantastical elements are the sandworms. These huge beasts were created by Herbert to parallel or allude to dragons from mythology. Much like these legendary creatures, sandworms also guard a valuable substance. Only instead of a hoard of gold, it's spice. Also, according to Herbert, Paul overcoming an impossible challenge like slaying or taming these fantastical beasts is a crucial step towards him becoming a hero that's more than human. Number 7. Ridley Scott almost directed the first film The road to get Dune to the big screen was troubled. One of several directors attached to the project was Ridley Scott. I was attracted to Dune because it was beyond what I'd done on Alien, which was kind of hardcore, kind of horror film. Scott had planned to split the story into two films, much as the 2021 adaptation intends to do. However, the pre-production process proved slow and intensive, and Scott was unwilling to commit to a movie that would likely take so many years to complete. The recent death of his brother Frank was also a factor. Ultimately, Scott would go on to deliver a different landmark sci-fi film, Blade Runner. Even so, we can't help but wonder what his version of Dune would have looked like. Since Denis Villeneuve made Blade Runner 2049, the new Dune may give us a glimpse at what could have been. It's time. Number 6. An abandoned adaptation with big names Scott wasn't the first director involved with getting Dune off the ground. One of the previous attempts came from Chilean French filmmaker Alejandro Jodorowsky. For me, Dune will be the coming of a god. Jodorowsky managed to attract a lot of star power to the project, including actors like Orson Welles and David Carradine, and artists like Mick Jagger and Pink Floyd. Sadly, its expenses grew and its length would have been around 10 to 14 hours. His vision was so huge, 
so beyond what anybody else was doing at that time. While Dune fans would have surely loved it, the average audience member probably would not sit still for that long. Still, a lot of its production design, including some work by H.R. Giger, went on to influence films like Alien, The Terminator, and a certain other franchise we'll be discussing soon. The original Star Wars, the 77 film, there is a lot of visual reference from, from what Jodorowsky laid out on paper. Number 5. The story combines several ideas. In the late 1950s, Frank Herbert witnessed the U.S. Department of Agriculture's attempts to stabilize the sand dunes of Oregon. He combined that interest in ecology and the desert environment with humanity's obsession with messiahs. I am Uso, Paul Muad'Dib. One influence in that vein was T.E. Lawrence, aka Lawrence of Arabia, a British soldier who joined the Arab Revolt against the Ottoman Empire post-World War I. No prisoners! No prisoners! It's also been argued that Herbert was inspired by the rush for oil in Iraq from the 1920s on, when a consortium of Western companies established a monopoly. Iraq, Arrakis, get it? His hobby of cultivating hallucinogenic mushrooms may have also played a role. So, if it ever seems like Dune is trippy, well, there's a good reason for that. Number 4. Star Wars borrowed a lot from Dune. Is there a relationship between the worms and the spice? George Lucas drew on a lot of other stories to create Star Wars. One source it borrows heavily from is Dune, as Lucas and Herbert both acknowledged. Both stories feature a protagonist closely tied to a desert planet that engages in moisture farming. Both heroes discover a villain is secretly their relative. The Sarlacc is basically a sandworm. <laughs> Each features a galaxy-spanning empire where spice is a sought-after commodity. Remember the spice mines of Kessel? And both feature characters able to control others through the suggestive power of their voices. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. He can go about his business. You can go about your business. Let's just refer to it all as Dune Wars and call it a day. Tell them to stop hunting my son. Ow. Tell them. Number 3. Dune is soft science by design. Although Dune does feature plenty of terminology and concepts to learn, the underlying technology of the universe isn't really delved into. <laughs> this was intentional on Frank Herbert's part. At the time, sci-fi literature often dealt with harder, detailed explorations of science and technology. While the story does still have a learning curve, it's one based on a lot of fictional or theoretical concepts rather than the concrete scientific ideas or detailed explanations of machinery that other authors sought to include in their works. It is said that they depend on the spice that without it they can't navigate. By limiting the technical jargon to simpler concepts, Herbert made Dune a more accessible and ageless universe. Soon they'll begin to fold space. Number 2. Unanswered questions are intentional. Not only does Dune not go into detail about its technology, there are many questions about its lore and factions that are not answered, at least not by Frank Herbert. These include the backstory on the moratorium on computers and thinking machines, as well as the Bene Gesserit, the Guild, and the inner workings of the Great Houses. Planet Kaitain, home of the Emperor of the Known Universe. Although Herbert's son Brian has fleshed some of these out in his own novels, Frank left many ideas open-ended on purpose. He wanted to create the broad strokes of his universe, yet allowed the reader's imaginations to fill in the rest. You must share with us. Herbert argued that the stories that last are the ones that light the fires of our minds. And Dune has certainly lasted. I did not say this. I am not here. I understand. Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. It was first printed by a car manual publisher. Herbert had a hard time finding an established bookseller. Theaters handed out glossaries for Lynch's Dune. Imagine trying to read these in a dark cinema. The sequels were written alongside it. Parts of Dune Messiah and Children of Dune were planned from the beginning. It frightens you, doesn't it? The memory. You're afraid you'll remember who you were. 
it lent names to features on one of Saturn's moons. The plains of Titan bear the names of planets from Dune. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The ending is supposed to be sudden. Dune is an oddly paced story to say the least. It's a slow build, with a lot of maneuvering and development for most of it. However, its final act is action-packed, featuring a big battle and what amounts to a knife fight for the fate of the universe. <laughs> it also ends rather abruptly, with the Old Order turned on its head and a long and bloody war on the horizon. God created Arrakis to train the faithful. One cannot go against the word of God. Some have complained that there's no real denouement like in most stories, but Frank Herbert ended things before the falling action on purpose. Part of it was due to his philosophy of sparking our imaginations, but it also has the effect of leaving us wanting more. If I am not obeyed, the spice will not flow. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.